question is, um, how do you feel about Morara addressing government projects and he's just addressing the things that the government itself should be addressing? What's your comment? Yeah, Morara is actually, uh, is actually reminding us the tragic events that happened to this country between 2018 and 2022 when a deputy president, having been assured by the programs of government, went ahead and launched several projects that were in, our, that were in the budget. And after launching them, they defunded the projects officially because of political competition. People forgot about the effect of these programs on the people of Kenya and instead as a government then defunded those projects led by a one-time Minister for Interior, Fred Matiangi, who went, if you go back to your archives, you'll see the videos of him saying we won't fund those projects. So they officially defunded projects that were already budgeted and programmed under the manifesto of jubilee then where the deputy president belonged so now he's president and uh, those projects are part of the plan and i think morara is doing a good job at campaigning for william ruto to be president in 2027 because i can assure you all what he has done is put an encyclopedia or a work plan of the programs that William Ruto will have completed by 2027 in their majority. So that then in 2027, I hope Morara will go around and say, I read, I'm sure what the script he will use then and I can help him with an opening remark, will be, I said this and government did, because government will actually do. I love what he's doing. It is good to put government into account. It is good to put us under account. The only thing is, let him keep it as factual as he has kept it. Let him not go into the grey area of lies, which he hasn't done so far. If he keeps it factual, I love it because I can assure you those projects will be completed. A very good evening to you guys. Now we are at the launch of Obi's Adventures and right here with us is a pleasant surprise, the one and only Dennis Itumbi. How are you, sir? Uh, fantastic, and how are you? Very good. Karibu sana to this event. We didn't expect you. Umekuja. Karibu sana. Nimefika <laughs> Obi's <laughs> Adventures <laughs> are good people. Aha. Yes. Okay, so maybe we could start, you know, just about talking about Obi's Adventures. Um, what are you expecting to see them bring to the industry, especially because we've had quite an, uh, some of events, you know, people are quite disappointed on how they are managed. What is it that you're expecting to see from them? I'm hoping they can bring graffiti events. Oh. So it's something fresh, something new, something wild. That's what I expect from them. Uh -huh. Probably is you've been in so many events and you know how disappointing it is when you attend an event, but it's not well arranged. Maybe what can you uh, tell Obi Ventures? Uh, I've given them business, personal business for my personal events. So they are, I, I consider them to be w w ready for the market. Uh -huh. I believe it's a product that is coming for launch when they have tested themselves, stretched themselves and become ready for the big event that is ahead of them. I think uh, they will swim and they will find their space and their niche. I just um, can say a prayer for them. Yeah. I know you're someone that really likes to attend, you know, social events, Dennis. Is there something you'd want to single out that does not really impress you in most of the events? The ambush by you guys to interview me. Everything <laughs> else is good. <laughs> How about the setup? Uh, the setup is absolutely good. The choice of venue, I think, for the market and the niche they want to focus on is absolutely brilliant. I, I, I know some of the staff that are working in Obi Ventures, and I think they will bring in... They will bring in uh, the stuff and the focus and the grit and the metal that is needed uh -huh. for this space. Yeah. So, Dennis, I well, since you've been nominated by the president, so congratulations on that one. Thank you and very secondly, much. what is it that we are expecting to see from the creative economy? You know, as a youth, we have quite a lot of expectations from you. So, what is it that we can expect from you? Let me make a few clarifications here. The creative economy bit that I'm heading is going to be a coordination draw based at the presidency because as you are well aware, um, creative economy in this country is now divided into several ministries. The Ministry of Education has some drama festivals, the Ministry of Culture and Heritage has some arts and fashion and the museums. Then there's a Ministry of Sports and Creative Economy that hosts the creative economy. Then there's a Ministry of ICT that has softwares, which is part of uh, the creative economy on the digital superhighway. So my role will be to coordinate the various uh, stuff that's happening across those ministries and bringing them together to a table so that you have one focus. 
What do you expect? I think you need to give me a little bit of time. It's my second day in office. Um, trying to find out where the keys are, trying to find out uh, where my, the, the pen in the office is. And then I am going to be able to sit down with you. I'm actually going to be inviting you as a key. The digital media is a key player for the creative economy. I'm going to be inviting you without microphones to come and share your ideas. In fact, in the next 14 days, I'll give you an invite so that we can also have a chat about digital media on itself and what's the future for it. I will invite sector, music, uh, the music industry and all these things about royalties. That's copyright uh, Board of Kenya and uh, all the other players there. The film sector, the fashion sector, the art sector. I will meet sector. Um, after the next week, I finish settling in office. The other week, I will then now start meeting the sector for us to focus and know what we can change and bring money into the pockets of artists. All I can tell you is during my time in office, we will ensure that the money that is collected as royalties does not end up in administration and salaries at 80%. We will turn that to be 80% to the artist's pocket and 20% can be used to administer the cost or even less than that. So my focus is the artists in this country should not only be celebs, they should also be wealthy. Uh -huh. And uh, looking at the current creative industry, what do you have to say about it? Like Current, the current creative industry? I will be inviting you for a meeting mm -hmm. where I will get you into the details for it. I decided to give you a frame on top, mm -hmm. but I also have another office. Mm -hmm. I have creative economy and I am also the head of the presidential special projects. Uh -huh. yeah. So now in terms of the presidential special projects, very soon I will be giving you what exactly I'll be focusing on. I already know what exactly the focus is on and I am going to be bringing you on board to assist us deliver on that. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you this will be an interesting, if you haven't found government interesting, prepare yourself for a very interesting time from government. Mm -hmm. Now, among all the people, you know, we have quite a number of people the president would have nominated on that particular position, but he chose you, Dennis. What trait or what skill do you possess you feel that you are fit for that? Uh, first of all, my background is creative economy. Uh, basically, I have been a writer. In fact, my first job in journalism was a theater writer. I have been an actor. I have act scripted plays. I've scripted a few short movies i have participated in training for the creative economy and uh basically this feels like fish in water okay oh i i, I, I like that we can't wait to see what you do that to that uh, dennis now allow me to talk about endarasha what has happened today um uh, maybe you could comment on that and also there is an uproar uh, from the public regarding what the government has done donating food what do you have to say about that uh, matters of the government spokesman, I'll leave to him to advance. Mm -hmm. uh, but however, allow me to condole with the families that have been affected. Mm -hmm. It is a very, very tragic thing that happened today. I have found myself saying a prayer at every moment, even when I'm walking, because I, I just can't believe or describe the pain that I felt in the morning when I first watched the news that were coming in from Kieni and Nyeri. And um, I can only really empathize with the children. As you're well aware, the president has just uh, signed uh, three days of mourning for the children, that for the, for the country to join the families that have been affected. So the president declaring that from Monday to Wednesday, the country is going to go into national mourning. The flags are going to fly half mast so that then we can join the families in mourning and also uh, strengthen them. I feel absolutely pained by what happened last night. As to what government is doing on that particular issue, I'm a guy who lets people do what they are supposed to be doing. So the government spokesman, I'm sure, will be, uh, will be interacting with what he said about rice and something. Yeah. yeah so I'm sure he'll be commenting about that and uh, what he felt, why he, need, he felt rice was needed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Dennis, as we let you go, allow me to ask you, because you are quite a target on social media, you know, and all this backlash that you get, how do you handle that? I don't know. I think I, I think I flow. I think I, let me tell you something about social media. I've been on that social media as a hate figure for a long time. Yeah. I've learned, I've learned the art of ignoring and the art of interacting. So I think the, I, I, what I do, you know, your critics are always a day behind you. 
so I leave a day ahead of them. So if, as I comment on what I did yesterday, I'm already in tomorrow commenting about what they'll be commenting tomorrow. When they get there, I'm on the next day. So I've learned the art of being ahead of my critics. I love my critics and I pray for them to continue to, con to have a longer life. Um, but I face, an, I face another fundamental problem on social media is that people believe I should be fixing everything that happens. You know, you have fought with your wife, you think I should be sorting it out, you, everything that happens on earth and uh, I'm around um, the guy they come to and I welcome them. Yeah. I will, t I, I, I try very much not to be everything to everyone, but I try as much as possible to respond where I can. My only regret about social media is that I can no longer respond to all my inbox messages. Um, it's become impossible even for my SMSs and WhatsApp, but I try as much as possible to respond when I can. Mm -hmm. At some point do they affect you? Well, I don't think so. I, I think I've, I think I'm a tough metal. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very hard to, it's very hard to, first I, it's very rare you get me annoyed, so it's very hard to annoy me, then it's very hard to get into my psyche by, written, by the written word, the only written word that gets into my psyche is the Bible, uh, the rest of things you can compose compositions, I will reply with an equal good composition, mm -hmm. choose a word, any word, um, underestimate, well look, remember the day we went to the coast together? As we looked at the beach and the wave was coming our way, do not, we did not underestimate the strength of the wave. We ran towards it and then we slid on the sand and we fell. And as we fell, the wave kept coming our side and swept above us. As we looked each other into each other's eyes, I saw myself standing inside your eyes, my feet touching your heart. And at that moment, when the wave was over us like a blanket, that moment, I knew I could not underestimate the power of your kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, <laughs> Khalif Cairo should have given you a job to write a poem a while back. Now, Hilda has a question here. Yes. I do have a question. Yes. So, allow me to ask about Facebook monetization. It's still up and down. It's still not exactly there because the, the ads are still, um, what's the word? As a, it's not working as people expected it to work. What's your comment on that? So two things happened after the old, Facebook was supposed to go live on full monetization uh, in uh, end of end of June, start of July. That was not possible because at the time they told us uh, the protests that were ongoing in the country, they would not be able to roll it out. And remember, at the time they rolled out to other countries who, who actually benefited from our push as a country. We are the ones who pushed for this thing. Um, I must admit I don't have a, the latest update, but all I'll do for you within the next 14 days, I am going to call you. I'm going to ask uh, the Facebook Kenyan team led by Masi. I'm going to meet them in the office and I'll invite you so that they can give us an update together and then I'm able to comment on that. I must admit at the time you asked that question, I don't have the latest update on what Facebook is doing because they told us once the protests subside, they are going to launch the full monetization and I know that is not yet there. I know there's some aspects that went live on the monetization, but I know it's not fully 100% rolled out. So give me 14 days. I will give you, remind me so that I give you an interview specifically on that and I will drag along the Facebook team so that they can explain to us what's happening. Okay, that would be wonderful. The other question is, um, how do you feel about Morara addressing government projects? And he's just addressing the things that the government itself should be addressing. What's your comment? Yeah, Morara is actually, uh, is actually reminding us the tragic events that happened to this country between 2018 and 2022. When a deputy president, having been assured by the programs of government, went ahead and launched several projects that were in our that were in the budget and after launching them they defunded the projects officially because of political competition people forgot about the effect of these programs on the people of Kenya and instead as a government then defunded those projects led by a one time minister for interior Fred Matiangi who went, if you go back to your archives, you'll see the videos of him saying, we won't fund those projects. So they officially defunded projects that were already budgeted and programmed under the manifesto of Jubilee then, where the deputy president belonged. So now he's president, and uh, those projects are part of the plan. And I think Morara is doing a good job at campaigning for William Ruto to be president in 2027, because I can assure you all what he has done is put an encyclopedia or a work plan of the programs that William Ruto will have completed by 2027 in their majority. So that then in 2027, I hope Morara will go around and say, I rate, I'm sure what the script he will use then, and I can help him with an opening remark, will be, I said this 
and government did because government will actually do. I love what he's doing. It is good to put government into account. It is good to put us under account. The only thing is, let him keep it as factual as he has kept it. Let him not go into the gray area of lies, which he hasn't done so far. If he keeps it factual, I love it because I can assure you those projects will be completed. All right. Thank you very much, Dennis, and enjoy your evening. Thank you very much. You are not too tough. Thank you very much. <laughs>